Hey guys, still going to be taking a closer look at this year's Senate election in Wisconsin. As Wisconsin shifts away from the Republican Party, it could be a race that changes the entire dynamic of this year's midterms. If Wisconsin goes blue, the GOP's chances at winning back the Senate basically disappear, and that is essentially what is happening right now. Ron Johnson has performed very terribly in the most recent polls against Mandela Barnes. Before Barnes won the Democratic nomination a couple of weeks ago, Ron Johnson was thought to be pretty solid in in his seat. However, he is now one of the most vulnerable Republicans running for re-election, probably the number one most vulnerable incumbent that is on the ballot once again in November. And so to show you guys just how important Wisconsin could be, I'm going to fill in some of the toss-up races on this map. So Ohio and North Carolina, even though Democrats are doing surprisingly well in these two races, it would still be pretty far-fetched to say that Democrats would win. Republicans are still likely to retain these two seats, even though they do not have incumbents running for their re-elections. And Democrats are probably going to hold on to New Hampshire and actually flip Pennsylvania. And that is just how well John Fetterman is doing right now against Mehmet Oz. And so we have four states left. If Democrats can flip Wisconsin and defeat Ron Johnson, Democrats only have to win one out of the three races left, and all three of these states currently have incumbent Democratic senators. We have Mark Kelly in Arizona and Raphael Warnock in Georgia. I think that these two senators are both stronger than Catherine Gordas Masto in Nevada, and right now Mark Kelly is in a very good position. If you look at the 2022 Senate forecast according to 538, Democrats have a 70% chance at retaining the seat in Arizona with Mark Kelly as the incumbent. So the Senate map looks immediately a lot better for the Democratic Party if they can flip the state of Wisconsin. But as of right now, it really is very much a toss-up, and we're just going to have to see what happens. But right now, the data does point to Wisconsin being much more competitive than we thought just a couple of weeks ago. And so looking at the two candidates that we have, Ron Johnson is the incumbent Republican senator running for a third term in office, while Mandela Barnes is the lieutenant governor of Wisconsin, serving under Tony Evers. And so Tony Evers has found a new running mate as Tim Michaels is challenging Evers for the governorship. Tony Evers is now running for a second term in November. And so these two elections are going to occur simultaneously. In 2016, Ron Johnson won re-election by 3.4%. It was a surprising victory. Russ Feingold was widely expected to flip this seat back for the Democrats, but Ron Johnson did outperform expectations, something that Donald Trump did there as well, as of course in 2016, Donald Trump flipped the state of Wisconsin for the first time in 28 years. The last time before this that Republicans won Wisconsin was George H. W. Bush all the way back in 1988. And so if we go back to 2010, Russ Feingold at this point in time was running for his third term. Feingold is the former two-term senator from Wisconsin. He won his first race in 1998 and was re-elected in 2004, defeating Tim Michaels. Yes, the same Tim Michaels that is now challenging Tony Evers. So basically, almost 20 years later, Tim Michaels is finally getting back into Wisconsin politics. So looking at the 2010 race, this was the first Senate win for Ron Johnson. He won it pretty easily by 5%. And in 2016, he also outperformed expectations. So Ron Johnson is going to be a very difficult senator to defeat for Mandela Barnes. But as of right now, if you do look at the polls, he is favored. But if you look at the 2016 number, Numbers. They were also pretty good for Russ Feingold at that point in time. Now, the only good thing for Democrats is that in 2016, the polls were skewed a little bit in favor of the Democrats because we also had a presidential election, and polls with Trump are known for being pretty bad, as voters, for some reason, simply do not like stating that they're going to vote for Donald Trump, even if they end up doing so. So in 2016, Russ Feingold did lead in basically almost all of the polls that were done in the weeks going into the election, and most political predictions had the state of Wisconsin as being tilt or lean Democratic. However, some sources did still have it as a toss-up. So 2016, we definitely did see a surprising race, but in 2022, we could also see a surprising race with Mandela Barnes winning. So looking at the polls a little bit closer here, Mandel Barnes leads by 4% in the most recent poll conducted by Fox News. In a previous Marquette poll, this is an AB rated pollster, shows Barnes up by 7 percentage points. So we're going to take a closer look at this Marquette poll. Looking at the numbers here, 51% of Wisconsin voters say they will vote for Mandela Barnes, 44% for Ron Johnson, so a 7 point lead according to this poll. And so they did two polls, one in August and one in June. And you'll 
you'll see that the numbers for Manila Barnes increase significantly over just those two months. Now, there are some other numbers that I do want to take a look at. If you look at the votes for each candidate by party identification, you will see that this is the August poll here. Mandela Barnes has support of 52% of independents. Just 32% of independents want to vote for Ron Johnson, and more Democrats support Mandela Barnes than Republicans for Ron Johnson. If you look at the polling numbers in June, the numbers for independents were basically even. And so independents in Wisconsin are going to be the ones that choose who becomes the next U.S. Senator from the state, if that's Mandela Barnes, or if Ron Johnson is going to retain his seat. Because, of course, in terms of party identification, Democrats and Republicans are pretty even. It's going to come down to, of course, the independents. And with Mandela Barnes winning a majority of independents and Ron Johnson only at 38, this is very positive for the Barnes campaign. We also have some other numbers here showing how people feel about these candidates. So the respondents to this poll were asked whether or not they believe that these four candidates cared about them personally. And so if you do look at the numbers for Mandela Barnes and Ron Johnson, 50% of Wisconsin voters feel that Mandela Barnes cares about people like them. 27% feel that Mandela Barnes does not. And for Ron Johnson, the numbers are much worse. 41%, just 41% of his own citizens feel that he does not care about them. Well, 49%, almost a majority of Wisconsin voters feel that Ron Johnson does not care about them. So, uh, you know, these numbers obviously are not that great for the Republicans. If we look at the favorability of both Mandela Barnes and Ron Johnson, you'll see that Mandela Barnes has a 37% favorable rating, 22 unfavorable, and 30% have not heard enough about him. 11% don't even know who he is. But for Ron Johnson, 47% of Wisconsin voters view him negatively. That is a big hurdle to overcome for the incumbent Republican. 47% of voters in Wisconsin do not feel positive positively about Ron Johnson's as 38% approve of how he is doing. And the final statistic that I want to look at here is the approval rating of Joe Biden. 40% of respondents view Joe Biden positively. 55 do not approve of the job that he is doing. This is the April poll, of course. And so the numbers are not great for Joe Biden, obviously. It is pretty representative of the national picture. Joe Biden currently is underwater by on 14 to 15%. And so even though Joe Biden is not popular according to the respondents of this poll, it is very good for Democrats that Mandela Barnes is still leading overall by a margin of 7%, despite his president being underwater by 15 And so this is, of course, also in sync with the generic ballot numbers that we're seeing. We are seeing Democrats doing better and better nationwide. They have now expanded their generic ballot lead to 0.6% against the Republicans. Now, obviously, Democrats are not even close to where they were at in 2020 when they led by a margin of 7.3% in November. And of course, in 2018, they led by an even larger margin of 8.6% nationwide. So Democrats are doing much worse than they were in the last two major election years. But still, it is pretty notable that they are still leading in more popular than Republicans as a whole, despite their president being, at this point in time, the most unpopular president in American history over the last couple of decades. You would have to go back to decades ago to find a president that's more unpopular than Joe Biden in a time where polls were pretty scarce. So as of right now, Wisconsin overall, Mandela Barnes is defying the odds and defying the unpopularity of his party's own president in the White House. And according to the betting odds right now, Barnes has a 41% chance at winning 62 for Ron Johnson. Looking at the overall trend, it is not good for the Republicans here. And so 60-40, I mean, really does not mean too much at all. If Mandela Barnes has a 41% chance at winning according to the betting markets, he is very much in this race. Betting markets are right in most of the time. However, there are times in which they have been inaccurate, and this race could be one of them. But again, it also could not. So as of right now, I mean, the general consensus is that that Wisconsin is going to be a very close election, but Ron Johnson, at least at this point in time, does have a slight advantage. I do believe that if the election was held today, Ron Johnson would win by a very small margin. However, we do have three months to go, a little bit less than three months, and just look at what happened in the last three months. In the last three months, Democrats took the lead in the generic ballot. If you look at the numbers at the very end of May, Republicans were still up nationwide by 2.6%. Now they're down by 0.6%. So a lot can change in just a few months. And so Ron Johnson is not secure to win his seat. But as of right now, he does have a very slight advantage. And you will see a very similar pattern according to the 538 forecast.
Currently, they have Wisconsin identified as a lean Republican state. It's very close to becoming a toss-up, even according to their categorizations. Ron Johnson wins in 60% of simulations done by 538, just 40% show Mandela Barnes winning. But if you look at the overall trend, I mean, very similar to the trends that we saw in the betting markets. Right now, the numbers for Ron Johnson have been going down more and more. At the very beginning of the summer, he had a 77% chance at winning. And so when you look at the statistical models, 64 is nothing. Pretty much, it's a coin toss between both candidates, but 77-23, at that point in time, Ron Johnson was the clear favorite to win this race, and if you look at the popular vote margin, it went from a margin of 7% for Ron Johnson, now it's a one-point race between the two candidates, and that's mainly because every single poll has shown Mandela Barnes doing so well. And if you look at this model based on the polls alone, you'll see that Mandela Barnes is actually favored to win. This is a light model of the 530 forecast, so they only take polling numbers, and Mandela Barnes wins in 61% of simulations, and of course, that's because of the most recent poll that Mandela Barnes has taken the lead now, and according to the polls alone, Mandela Barnes is expected to win 51% of the vote. How the Dux model is known for being more accurate, we also have a classic model, which shows a very close rate. So the only thing that's keeping Ron Johnson afloat in the 538 forecast, if you look at the best model that they have, is expert ratings, and these are ratings done by sources like the Cook Political Report or Savdo's Crystal Ball. And so I want to finish off by looking at the Wisconsin gubernatorial election between Tony Evers and Tim Michaels. Michaels has not served in political office before. However, he has run before. Of course, his 2004 Senate run against Russ Feingold, he lost by 11%. And so if you look at the latest polls for this race, Tony Evers is leading in all of them. However, the same Marquette poll that had Mandela Barnes leading by 7%, Tony Evers leads by just 2 And so Tim Michaels is also down by 3% according to Fox News. That's only a one point difference compared to the four point margin for Mandela Barnes in the Senate election, but Tony Evers is more vulnerable than Mandela Barnes in terms of winning his race. Of course, Mandela Barnes is not really vulnerable because he is not the incumbent senator in office. But if you do look at this election between Evers and Michaels, Tony Evers is going to overcome a big challenge if he wins, and that of course is Joe Biden in the White House. Wisconsin is famous for voting for governors who are not of the same party as the incumbent president. The last time that a Republican won the gubernatorial election in Wisconsin with a Republican in the White House was all the way back in 1990. And the last time that a Democrat did it with a Democrat in the presidency was all the way back in 1962 when JFK was still the U.S. president. So if Tony Evers wins, it would be the first time in 60 years that a Democrat has won a Wisconsin governor election with a Democratic president in the White House. So right now, I have both Wisconsin races basically as competitive as they have ever been. In 2016, Ron Johnson might have won re-election, but he is very, very vulnerable going into his matchup against Mandela Barnes. And of course, in the governor race, Tony Evers just won by 1.1% in 2018, and so defeating him is not going to be that unlikely, but he is still a relatively popular governor and somebody that did win a very tough race four years ago. So both these Wisconsin elections are going to have a major impact on both the state of Wisconsin and the country as a whole, as of course the Senate majority could rely on Wisconsin. Now, as of right now, my projection for Wisconsin is that it's going to be a tilt Republican state. I also have Arizona as a lean Democratic one, so basically a very, very close map. I do believe, though, that Ohio and North Carolina are going to go red, even if Tim Ryan is doing well in Ohio and Cherry Beasley is actually leading the polls now in North Carolina. And of course, I do have Arizona, Pennsylvania, and New Hampshire as lean Democratic states, so it's really going to come down to Nevada and Georgia, but of course, Wisconsin here is still a tilt state. I think that Ron Johnson is much weaker than initially perceived, and that is going to be a big issue for Republicans, and they know it. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure you like it down below if you enjoyed it. Comment down below who you think will win the Wisconsin Senate election, and of course the governor election as well, and whether or not you believe 538's forecast for this race, as they currently give Ron Johnson a 60% chance at winning. Subscribe to my channel if you have not. Also consider purchasing a channel membership for just 99 cents per month for extra perks on this channel as we enter the midterms in November, and I will see you guys in the next video.